Okay, so I'm taking zero to automate right now, and you know, I have my own notes. Um, so here we're uh, analyzing Drydex, and something that he probably didn't tell you that would be really helpful when you use the Drydex sample in uh, the anti analysis techniques part. Um, I think I'm allowed to record, you know, giving out tips and answers. So Drydex is uh, using a special packer and a compressed um, executable, right? So one thing that the instructor Daniel Bunce has pointed out is that they tend to have the compressed executable right here, right beneath where it's, uh, or the decompressed executable right underneath the compressed executable. That's a notable, um, let me see if I'm still recording, uh, trait of Drydex. So one trick I learned is what you want to do, and let me try this again. So what I do when I look at a sample, and this is the original um, sample, right, is I use dump bin imports drydex.dll, the DLL that he gave me. And what I do is I go through certain things like uh, device input output control is very useful get module file name A um, let's see get module handle wide get module handle wide means that you open a DLL to extract a single function and get proc address extracts the function out of a DLL so I usually put like debug, uh, debugger breakpoints on them including debugger checks like is debugger present so I solved this um, and I thought maybe I'll just give out a tip um, so to better clarify and make this course easier. So I put breakpoints on, we can try this again just as demonstration. So I always put breakpoints on virtual lock which unlocks shellcode or it locks a uh, compressed executable. I have also put a breakpoint on get proc address because that's what happens when you get like um, a breakpoint on uh, you know um, extracting a function out of a DLL put a breakpoint on virtual protect and I put a breakpoint on uh, everything I saw load library A permanently opens the handle to a DLL basically so and I put um, these breakpoints on. So I put. Uh, so I'm gonna go restart this though to explain what I mean, because this is a paid course, and I think I'm allowed to do certain things, and I can't do other things. So get proc address is now enabled. So I'm gonna jump into use land code. But before we get into use land code, we open a get module handle wide, and look right here. It's kernel 32.dll. All right, because Almost all executables import kernel 32.dll, so you can't get to the user land code until you import it. So press it again. Again. Uh, let's just keep pressing get proc address. So when you restart a binary and you have a breakpoint, you want to remove the breakpoint to get proc address because it's just importing functions from kernel 32.dll. Let's just keep going. So now we open uh, get module handle wide. I don't have DLL breakpoints, by the way. Get module handle wide. So we're opening more DLLs. And let's just keep going until we get into user line code. So address of entry point. So now I disabled get proc address. If you want, if you have a highly obfuscated payload like um, that you never touched before, you definitely want to put a breakpoint and get proc address and take note of what it's actually breaking on. So let's just turn it on. And it's getting get proc address from kernel uh, base DLL initialize critical section extended. So I'm going to just remove this breakpoint because I already figured out how to unpack this, but for new malware, you definitely want to put a breakpoint to get proc address to see what kind of obfuscated functions that you may have never seen before. So now it's getting another module handle to current 32.dll. Let's keep going. And it's going to take a while. Um, 
before we get to virtual lock. Come on. Okay, so we're on virtual protect. Virtual protect, the first argument uh, of the stack pointer offset is um, what it's setting protection settings on. It's setting it to executable or hex 40 right here. So you right click, follow and dump. And it's probably shell code. For this dried example, it appears to execute shell code and then it um, runs virtual lock multiple times. So now we're on our first virtual lock call. So what you want to do is click on this button right here to execute to return. And the return address is actually where it's allocating the decompressed executable. So you press this again, and it's virtual lock again. So I would execute to a return. EAX contains the return address. Follow and dump. Execute again. We hit virtual lock again. I selected dump three. Execute return. Follow and dump. And we're going to hit virtual protect again. But notice that dump three, the last virtual lock, we have an ex a compressed executable right here. So let's see if that command does well. So what we do is we click here, um, make sure to look for the MZ header. So control B, you wanna look for, uh, what was the MZ header bytes? 4D, 5A, and 90, 0, 3. And we found it right here, the pattern within the stump. So we go here, and you follow this and dump, and we found the decompressed executable right beneath the compressed executable. So you go from here, and you just shift. See it has the text our data data relock. So you just shift, and you just capture all this data. So just scroll all the way down. Uh, Right click, binary, save the file. And desktop, drive us at dump. I'll just say dump two. And then we'll open this in PBear and see if we uh, have the same file effectively. Because we can check the hashes or we can just, um, let's see, where's dump two? So it should have imports two functions from kernel 32.dll, output debug stream and sleep, and two exports DLL register server. So that's just a tip on how to do um, the uh, memory dumping for decompressed executables because once we go back to the source, control B, um, I notice this has been a little bit tricky so what I do is I just look for a decompressed evidence of a decompressed um, MZ header beneath the section, let's see, what was it, 90.0.0.0.3. And you see if you look at the address, you can follow and dump. The last step that we had before we started calling virtual protect to change the execution settings is right underneath the compressed executable, which is right here. So that's just like a cool tip that I wanted to share.